Hi guys, welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and webdesignertechtips.com. Well, we've got a bit of button positioning for you today. We've had a few questions about this. So we're gonna position some buttons with absolute positioning here. And we're also gonna position some buttons using a bit of Flexbox CSS there. And they're totally responsive. If I hit my Chrome Inspector F12, we can check them out. Get my responsive toggle up. Here it is on a phone. If we roll down there, you'll notice that when we look at this on a phone, the buttons are stacked. If we look at it on a tablet, they're back to their flex position there and back to their absolute position here. So it's totally responsive. Let's get started. I'm gonna get rid of my Chrome Inspector here. I'm gonna enable the Visual Builder. Once enabled, let's roll down past my mega menu there. And here we are. I'm simply gonna delete these buttons. Great, and what I've got is a section here, the blue tab. In the section, I've got a row, the green tab. I'm simply gonna add four little buttons. So I'm gonna hit the little dark button to add a new module. I'm going to hit a button module and what I'm going to do is make that text light in color. I'm going to line it in the middle. It's actually in the middle of our row right there now. I'm going to make the text light in color. And because I want these to stack on mobile, I'm going to go down to spacing. I'm going to give them maybe 15 pixels margin top and bottom just put the 15 in it'll put the picks for you hit the chain it'll do the opposite side great that's all i'm going to do i'm sure you know how to style a button and put the link in under the content there where you want to take people i'm going to clone that for as many as you want i'm going to do four because i'll put one up in each corner i mean that's great but it kind of makes my little row there look way too deep for me with the graphic there so we're going to absolute position these buttons. So what I'm going to do is go into the button itself, over to advanced. If we roll down, we've got position. I'm going to flip it from default to absolute. When I do that, you'll see it pop up to the left corner up there. There it is right there. Fantastic. And you can give it a bit of horizontal or vertical offset if you want to down below. Let's just offset it perhaps by 25 pixels or something. Obviously you put yours where you want to put yours. Yeah, that works for me. And we'll rinse and repeat for the other buttons. We'll put them where we want them. We'll go into this one. Again, over to advanced, down to position. Flip to absolute. This time let's put it in the bottom left corner. Great. And again, we'll offset it horizontally by however many you want to offset yours. Great. And I'm sure you can guess what we're gonna do with these next two right here. Over to advanced, positioning, this time, absolute. This time I'm gonna pop it up top right corner. And again, let's offset it. And finally, we've got our little button right here. Advanced, position, Absolute, we'll pop him down there in the matrix and offset him. Same as our other ones right there. If anybody's wondering about the Z index down below, if your button happens to disappear behind another one of your modules within your row, give it a high Z index of 25 or 30 or 150, whatever you want. And the thing that's covering it, you wanna go into there and it'll be in positioning still the Z index you want to take that anything below what you've given this one. Higher numbers with Z index will always appear on top. So if you've given this one 150 and something's covering it, go into the thing that's covering it and give it something below 150. All right, so there's our buttons. And now let's check it for devices. Hit the little purple button. We'll check it on tablet. Yep, that's all right. They've got plenty of room to be able to get to their buttons and do what they need to do. And we'll check it on mobile. 
Well, that'll probably work, but that's a little too close together for my liking. So what I'd like to do is stack them perhaps when we're on the mobile here. So let's go back to our desktop. And I'm going to go into each button, hit the little cog, back over to the advanced and to the positioning. What I'm going to do now is common to all Divi modules. If you roll over the dark writing in there, you'll see some little icons appear. Let's go over to our position. I'm going to hit the little mobile phone icon. And now I decide it's OK on desktop, OK on tablet, but on mobile, I want them to stack. So I'm going to change it back from absolute positioning to the default. If I actually roll down there, you should see one of those buttons now on the bottom. And it's down there, making the other two look a bit busy. OK, to make this quicker, I'm going to do exactly the same for the other three buttons, but I'll do it in wireframe mode so it doesn't have to jump back and forth with the graphics. And wireframe mode is a great way of getting the things quickly. So we did the first one. Let's go into the second one. Advanced. Positioning. Get the little mobile phone up. Change that to default. Number three. Little mobile phone. Change it to the default. And finally, number four there. Great, so let's flip back and take a look at that again on mobile. Roll on down to where we need to go. There we go. And they've collapsed and they're stacking on top of each other now, which is great. And they should still be in their regular positions on tablet and desktop. Fantastic. Well, that's how to do it with absolute positioning. Nice little handy feature of Divi. We can do something pretty cool with a bit of flex code as well. I've got these four buttons here. They're on the bottom of this thing and they'll stay on the bottom for tablet. And again, when we go to mobile view, they'll stack on top of each other like this. Again, really easy to do. We've got to do a little bit of coding for this. Don't let that put you off. Any code I write, I'll put below the video. So let's go back to desktop mode. And what I got here is a row. And inside, it's just got a single column. So I'm simply going to delete this. OK, great. Well, we've got a section here again with a row and it's got a blurb module in it that's got that image background here. I'm going to add a new row to the bottom of this. I'm going to put a single column in there. Inside that column, I'm going to put four buttons. And again, I'm going to do some basic styling on these. Alignment, I'm going to pop them in the middle. And spacing wise, I'm going to give them a bit of margin top and bottom so we can stack them. And again, I'm just going to 15 picks top and bottom. And I want to make my text white again so they stand out a little bit more. Great. And again, I'm going to clone it another three times so we've got four of them. Let's go into my row now. I'm going to make it, just give it a black background so you can see it a little better, what's going on here with my buttons. There it is. And again, that's way too deep for me at the moment. That's OK. OK, well, what I want to do is I don't want to have four columns, but I want to spread these along the bottom here. So I'm going to write a bit of code for this today. And while we're in the row, we need to go in the actual column to do this. So we're inside the row. and I'm going to go into the single column up there. I'm going to go over to the advanced, to the custom CSS here. In the main element, I'm going to write display flex, colon flex. And this code will be down below for anybody that wants to copy and paste it, but it's very simple. And as you can see, it's displayed them for us here and they've it's stuck them side by side, but they're all sort of jumbled up against each other. Now you could go in and put a bit of padding around each other or a bit of margin, I should say. 
and space them out. But the easiest way to do this is just, just to use another little line of code and we'll say justify content, justify dash content. And I'm gonna say space around and that'll put them, give them the space that's around them equally. So I'm gonna say space around. And as you've noticed, they spread themselves out nicely along our little section there, which is just exactly what we want. So let's have a look at this on tablet. Yeah, that may be slightly close. You might decide to stack them on tablet, depending on how much text you had in your button. You could always give them a fixed width and then you could decide that way. And let's have a look on mobile. Yeah, that's not going to work on mobile. That's way too wide. So we need to stack them on mobile. Let's go back to our desktop mode. We need to go into our row, back into the column where we wrote the CSS, over to the advanced panel, custom CSS. There it is right there. And again, hover over the dark writing. We'll get some icons up. There's a little mobile phone. On the phone version, I'm going to go ahead and say display block. Let's bring it up so you can see what's going to happen when I do that. That's our top one. Here's our bottom one. I'm simply going to write display block, colon block. And as you can see, they've stacked themselves on top of each other, which is exactly what we want. So there's a few ways of positioning your button. One with a bit of absolute positioning and another way using a bit of Flexbox CSS. Let's check this out on the front end, make sure it's all going to work for us. and exit the visual builder. We can roll on down, there's our first one. That looks absolutely fine. There's our second one, that looks fine too. And I'll just zap them up on mobile. Let's hit my F12 here. That's on an iPad. Let's put it on iPhone. And we'll roll down to where we want to look at. There's our first one. Obviously, I could have given a bit more padding left and right on the blurb module up there, but they've stacked nicely for us. And here's the bottom one, and they've stacked nicely for us too. So there you go, guys. There's a few options for positioning your button with Divi. I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie with System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.